2022 Ford Maverick, Hyundai Santa Cruz, and Honda Ridgeline. What do you need to know about these small trucks before buying one? That's what we're going to find out. Welcome to Car Help Corner, where we help you, the consumer, master the process of car buying and car ownership. Smaller, more affordable pickup trucks seem to be making a bit of a comeback in the marketplace, and for good reason. The reality is, is that a lot of consumers just don't need to have a full-sized pickup truck when a smaller truck can get the job done perfectly fine. The great thing about these smaller size trucks is that they're not only more affordable, but they're also a lot easier to drive around in and park in tighter spots. They're more fuel efficient and you're not really sacrificing anything in terms of features and technology. So if you want to know everything there is to know about the latest generation of small trucks, which include the Ford Maverick, the Hyundai Santa Cruz, and the Honda Ridgeline, make sure to stick around to the end of this video. Although there are some major differences between these three trucks, one thing that they all have in common is that they're all based on unibody construction with crossover SUV-based platforms. Now I know a lot of hardcore truck fans are going to be screaming that these are not real trucks because they don't have body-on-frame construction or true 4x4 systems or even big V8 engines, but there's nothing wrong with that. The reality is, is that these are perfectly fine trucks that are suited for a very specific purpose, and that is for people who just want a city-friendly truck Truck that's easy to drive, easy to park, and gives you a comfortable ride quality with just enough truck-like capability. In addition to being based on crossover SUV platforms, another thing these three trucks have in common is that you can only configure them one way with one standard sized bed and a quad cab configuration with four doors. The Maverick is the smallest of the three trucks here, with a relatively tight interior space that is suitable for adults in the back seats, but it is a bit on the smaller side when you compare it to other trucks. You can, however, flip up the rear seat bench, giving you a little bit more storage space. The bed of the Maverick is pretty small at 4 feet, but it does have a pretty decent payload capacity of 1500 pounds, and it is practical enough to fit all kinds of things like bicycles and even 4x8 sheets of plywood, thanks to special moldings on top of the wheel wells. The Santa Cruz, by comparison, has a fairly similar amount of room to the Maverick, so the interior is definitely a bit on the tighter side, especially when compared to the Hyundai Tucson on which it's based, but it is a still fairly practical interior with a decent amount of rear seat room and at least you can fold up the rear seats, giving you a good amount of cargo space. Like the Maverick, you also get a four foot bed in the back, which is a pretty small bed for a truck, but it is still fairly practical. It can fit four by eight sheets of plywood, a few bicycles, and maybe a few other things. And what's really nice about it is that it has an optional built in to no cover, which is lockable, giving you really good security. It also has an under bed storage area that's lockable and comes with a drain plug, which gives you even more storage space. When it comes to practicality though, there's no question about it, the Honda Ridgeline is the most practical truck in this group. It's not only the largest truck, but it also has the most amount of interior space with a huge backseat area and tons of underseat storage. It also has the largest bed in this group with a 5.3 foot bed, making it a lot more practical than the other trucks. You also have a huge underbed storage area that's lockable, making this an extremely practical truck. When it comes to drivetrains and performance, all three of these trucks make their power very differently. The Maverick gives you a choice between two different drivetrains. Base versions of the truck come with front wheel drive and a 2.5 liter four cylinder engine that comes matched to a hybrid electric system. Total system output for the hybrid is around 200 horsepower and it's capable of towing around 2,000 pounds. But more significantly, you can get up to 40 miles per gallon or around 6.5 liters per 100 kilometers, which is incredible fuel economy for a truck. Although it only comes with front wheel drive and it doesn't have very much power or towing capacity, there's something really nice about the hybrid system in this truck. I like the fact that it's naturally aspirated, relatively simple, and Ford has been using hybrid technology for an extremely long time, so the company really knows what it's doing. And the fact that you get amazing fuel economy is a huge bonus. If you do want more power and all wheel drive, however, you can go with the optional EcoBoost engine, which is a two liter turbocharged engine that has over 250 horsepower and a 4,000 pound towing capacity. Going with the all wheel drive EcoBoost is obviously going to dramatically reduce the fuel economy and increase the price tag by quite a bit, but it's also gonna give you a more powerful truck that's also a lot more capable. 
It's hard to say at this point without having test driven the truck which is going to be the better drivetrain, but because of its much lower price tag and better fuel economy, and the fact that it's just a simpler engine that doesn't have complicated turbocharging, I'm willing to bet that the hybrid is going to be the better option. Like the Maverick, the Santa Cruz offers a choice between two different drivetrains too. The base versions of the truck come with a 2.5 liter naturally aspirated 4 cylinder engine that makes 180 horsepower and 190 pound feet of torque. This engine comes matched to an 8 speed automatic transmission with front wheel drive or optional all wheel drive. The towing capacity of this drivetrain is around 3,500 pounds, which is actually pretty reasonable. But if you want to tow more than that, you're going to want to go for the optional 2.5 liter turbo four cylinder engine that makes close to 300 horsepower and 300 pound feet of torque. This engine comes matched to a dual clutch automatic transmission, again with optional all wheel drive. Although this drivetrain does come with a lot more power and better towing capacity, which is really good for a truck, I'm just not sure how the turbocharging or dual clutch transmission are going to do in terms of long term reliability. These types of technologies do add a lot more complexity to the drivetrain and historically can lead to more problems down the road, but I guess time will tell which one ends up being the better choice. If you want a truck though that offers the peace of mind of bulletproof reliability however then you're probably going to want to go with the Ridgeline which uses a long running and time tested 3.5 liter naturally aspirated V6 engine which Honda has been using for a very long time. The V6 is rated for around 280 horsepower and 260 pound feet of torque which gives it pretty decent performance and good towing capacity of up to 5,000 pounds but more importantly it's a long proven reliable engine which is something that I know a lot of truck buyers are really going to appreciate. The V6 comes matched to a 9 speed automatic transmission with standard all wheel drive and it's rated for around 25 miles per gallon or 13 to 14 liters per 100 kilometers. So let's move on to the interiors and it's here again where you're going to see some major differences between these three trucks. In the case of the Maverick, you have a pretty basic utilitarian control layout which is something that a lot of truck buyers are probably going to appreciate. Most of the controls and hardware seem to have been pulled from the Ford Escape and Ford Bronco which is definitely a good thing. It uses the same 8 inch touchscreen infotainment system with Ford Sync interface and it comes standard with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto capability. You also get the same basic climate control setup steering wheel and turn knob for your transmission gear selector. Moving from the Maverick to the Santa Cruz is probably going to feel like a huge upgrade because the Santa Cruz basically borrows its interior from the Tucson SUV which is a real good thing. It has a very upscale looking interior with lots of nice materials and a really advanced touchscreen infotainment system which is not only one of the easiest to use ones on the market but also one of the best looking ones as well. Compared to the other two trucks here, this is definitely a busier looking interior with a lot more buttons and controls, but it also offers a lot more available technology. You can get plenty of advanced features like a really good backup camera system with a 360 degree monitor, lots of advanced active safety features, and even nice luxuries like heated and cooled seats, a Bose premium sound system, the list goes on and on. Although the interior of the Ridgeline is nowhere near as fancy looking as the one that you get in the Santa Cruz, it's a very well built space with excellent build quality materials and a very straightforward control setup. I really do appreciate the straightforwardness and excellent build quality of the interior on the Ridgeline, although a few things are pretty dated, especially the touchscreen infotainment system, which is easily the worst one in this group. Aside from that though, this is a really well designed space and the Ridgeline does offer a lot of great features including plenty of active safety features as part of Honda Sensing. Now in terms of value and pricing, there's some very different pricing structures between these three trucks. The major advantage that the Maverick has over its rivals is the really aggressive pricing and in order to take advantage of that it probably makes sense to go for a lower end model, probably a mid range XLT with the hybrid electric drivetrain which is not only going to be a lot cheaper but also a lot more fuel efficient as well. If you go for a higher end version of the Maverick then you're going to stretch the price into the mid $30,000 range which is basically where the Santa Cruz begins. Although the official pricing hasn't been announced at the time of this video, it's probably going to be priced somewhere in the $30,000 to $40,000 range depending on which trim level and drivetrain you go with. In the case of the Santa Cruz, kind of like the Maverick, it probably makes sense to go for the base drivetrain if you're okay with the power and towing capacity. Not only are you going to save yourself a lot of money, but you're also going to save yourself the complexity of going with the optional turbocharged engine and dual clutch transmission. 
The Honda Ridgeline is the most expensive truck in this group, ranging in price from around 36 to 45,000 US, or in Canada starting around $43,000 and stretching into the mid $50,000 range, depending on which trim level you go with. Although the Ridgeline is the most expensive truck here, it's also the one that offers the best value for money in many ways. Compared to the other trucks, the Ridgeline offers a lot more interior space and cargo space with a much larger bed, more towing capacity, and a much more powerful base engine. Not only are you getting a lot more for your money with the Ridgeline, but you're also getting that track record and peace of mind, thanks to the Ridgeline's amazing reputation for durability and long-term reliability. It is a well-proven truck that you know is going to last you an extremely long time, and because of that, it also has one of the best resale values in the truck market. The bottom line is that if you're looking for a city friendly truck that's just better at doing more truck things then you really can't go wrong choosing the Honda Ridgeline which is the most established truck in this group. The Hyundai Santa Cruz and Ford Maverick though are really interesting alternatives and I think they do offer a lot of value thanks to that much lower pricing. In the case of the Maverick for example, if you're able to pick up a mid-range XLT model with the hybrid drivetrain for the mid $20,000 range, I think that's an amazing value and just impossible to beat in the truck segment. I'll reserve full judgment though and I've had a chance to test drive both of these trucks in the near future, so stay tuned for that future video. So let me know what you think of these three trucks. Would you buy a Ford Maverick, a Hyundai Santa Cruz, or a Honda Ridgeline? Or would you just buy something else like maybe a Toyota Tacoma, or the new Nissan Frontier, or just another truck altogether? Let me know in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to like and subscribe. And if you want to check out some of my other car videos, you can take a look at these links right over here. And you can also follow me on TikTok and Instagram. And if you need any additional car buying advice, recommendations, or help with getting a great deal on your next new car purchase, you can check out carhelpcanada.com. Thanks so much for watching and see you next time.